Ooh. There we go. That's audio. Fucking yeah. Okay. All right. Now that we have audio, because my dumbass doesn't know how to set up audio, apparently, let's go over pretty much everything I've done up until this point. Ah, God damn it. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm painting a Shaltari army for Gropfleet. Um, what I started with here was my uh, Shaltari Dreadnought. Uh... And basically, it came out of the package gray, like all models do, and requires basing, painting, etc. Started out with, oh shit, let me, whoa, that's too close. There we go, okay. So, uh, the model comes out, you glue it together, no big deal, everyone knows how to work some super glue. We start out by basing with the uh, retrib Retributor Armor. Um, now, for a model this size, you could do it with a brush, but why waste your time? Get a can. It's MSRP's 19 bucks. You can come to the Gopher and get it for $16.58 before tax. Super cheap. I did my whole army with this one can. No big deal. Next, um, I washed with the uh, Seraphim Sapia. Uh, this is a just a general brown wash. But, it makes gold pop. Uh, on, on this model here, I went really light uh, with the wash. You can barely even see that it's on there. Only in a couple of the uh, deeper recesses near the bottom here. Can you actually really see that I've washed it. Compared to this model, you can see very well the depth and shine that double or even triple coating with the sapia will give the model. Very shiny, pops a lot more. The gold is a lot more gold color than it is bronze, like this one. So, after that, what we want to do is ask ourselves, where is the light coming from? Because, after all, we're doing object source lighting. Where is the light coming from? Um, on this one, I picked this little sphere in the center, uh, and I wet painted on the McCrag Blue base, as I just did with the uh, large dreadnought here, and then wet paint on uh, this layer. It is Temple Guard Blue. That goes on next as a wet, and then once we have applied both of these on wet, we start doing the actual object source lighting which I will get to once I get the rest of this applied to this model. The next step then is to dry brush, which is where you take, again, a dry brush with no water on it, uh, and almost no paint, and you brush stroke away from your source. And that gives the illusion, as you can see on this model, of the emission of light, essentially. So once we dry brush on that dark light blue, we go to the uh, Baharoth blue, which we even apply less paint there. And then finally, the Ulthuan gray, which is essentially just a, a cold white or a white with mild blue tone to it. So let's get back to where the hell's my brush? Got it. Over here. So let's get back to the Dreadnought. Back up just... So we've got this little area's done. Finish this guy and we'll flip it over and do the other side. So again, add just a little bit of water to your brush and squeegee some of it out. Grab the Temple Guard, shake it. Grab this little here. Don't need a whole lot because we're just finishing up this one side. All we're doing is covering up the McCrag 
blue. That's the dark blue. Nice little coat. And then we want to do the underside here, which you can barely see. Uh, you can see the difference in color there. We want to also do that, but again, because it's the underside, we don't really have to be that particular. Oh, I'm going to need way more paint for that. Grab quite a bit. Not a ton, but enough. Which, again, is very subjective. Even I'm still trying to get the hang of how much paint, how much water, what the correct ratio is. Because, again, it's very particular, especially if you're not using a wet palette. You can, you can screw up the, the ratio very easily. And your paint's just going to run all over your model. And that's no fun. That's not what we want. Run across the top here. I can still see a little bit of the dark blue coming through, so we'll just run this across here. That looks good. All right, we'll flip it over and do the other side. So since I got a bunch of paint on here, we'll go ahead and do the the larger bit here first. As my camera auto focuses, put a big old goober right there on it and kind of spread it around. Again, object source lighting, you do not have to be very particular with your lines. It's kind of like a uh, coloring, only you're a toddler. Staying in the lines is optional. Up, come through. I know you can't see what I'm doing here. Maybe I can flip it around so you can see. Now I can't see. Now nobody can see. Holy Christ! Bottom a bit. Not perfect. Doesn't have to be. Not have to be. Perfect. Now that we've got a lot of that paint off the brush, come over here and do this a little bit. I'm going to grab a little bit more water here because my brush is kind of drying out. My brush is kind of drying out. Easy for me to say. Just a tad of paint. We don't need a whole lot. We're doing these small little areas here. Don't need a whole big bucket of paint. You can't see what I'm doing. I am a horrible. That's not bad. We'll flip it over here. And there's our step number two finished. Not bad at all. Cool. So we'll set this down for a minute, let it dry. Should only take a minute or two. In the meantime, we're going to wash our brush out. And I will actually get my hobby pad and throw that down. Give me just a minute. Yes, Ethan. 
Uh, Iris asks, do you have the old? Have it? Yeah, the one that we're not, we can't even sell. It's over here, out here. Sorry about that. I had to deal with a thing. So I've got my, my hobby pad here, and we're going to do some dry brushing. Dry brush, just like in the name. We want little to almost no paint actually in or on the brush. So. We want to get a little bit of paint on here. That's way too much. Let's wipe most of that off if we. And what we're going to do is get most of the paint off of here yet again by just this guy. Get all of the paint off until. Yeah, that's still too much paint. We want almost no paint to be coming off of the brush before we start this. So that's not too bad. There's very little paint right at the bottom of the screen here coming off the brush. So basically what we want to do now is just kind of come away from these areas and just leave a tiny little bit of paint behind. To give the illusion of the emission light. I don't know if you can really see it right now, but there's just a little bit of blue there coming off the brush. And we'll come off here the other way. Which is fine, no big deal, just a little bit of paint on there, not a lot. Now, for this area, that's a, for this area, it's a really big light. So we're going to want a lot of paint coming off of here. Zoom out a bit. So what we're going to do here is we've still got plenty of paint here in the brush, so we're just going to dry brush the absolute hell out of this. whole area here is going to get dry brushed. All of this down here, all around here. Go ahead and just give it a good rough, don't be gentle, no need to be gentle. Give it a rough brushing. Now, I don't know if you can see really well, but we've got a little bit of blue up there. I think, I think I need more paint on my brush. Eh, maybe not.
it almost gives a fuzzy appearance. Almost like it's the camera's out of focus around these areas. Not bad. Let's get a little bit more paint on here. Just a bit. As you can see, I am absolutely ruining this brush. But that's dry brushing. You, you will go through, depending on how much dry brushing you do, dry brushes a heck of a lot faster than you will a normal brush. At least I do. But I'm also very aggressive with my dry brushing. So, you know what it looks like? There could be some light reflecting off of this surface over here. I'm going to dry brush it a little and just see what we get. Just a little bit. Not too hard. Not too much. Ooh, that's too much over there. More paint off here. That looks pretty good. We'll get a little bit down here. Not bad. Not bad. I kind of like that. And eh, maybe even some down on this big disc. Just a little bit. Just enough to give it a little blue hue. Now, you can look at this side, and then we'll flip it over and look at this side, and you can actually finally start seeing some of the difference there. This side, nice and clean. This side, fuzzy and dirty. The fuzzy and dirty, that's what we're going for. I'll add a little bit more up top here. But more around the back. Maybe, maybe some shining back here a little bit. Yeah, it makes sense. And we'll get some up here. You can't really mess up object source lighting. I mean, you can, but it's... It's one of the first techniques I learned, and I'm still a very new painter. And it's just really hard to mess up, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's going to do it for this side. Now we're going to flip over and uh, do the other side. Now, I know I said you never want to get your dry brush wet. That's not always true. Because I've got paint so far up in the bristles here, I'm going to clean this out a little bit. To really get into the bottom of the cup, wash it out, be a little aggressive. Again, it's a dry brush, you're gonna ruin it anyway. Don't worry about keeping the bristles straight, nothing like that. Alright. Now I'm gonna come over here to my paper towel and just... Try to get as much of the moisture out as I can, squeeze the bristles. Go to a new spot, squeeze the bristles. Eh, not bad. Not great. Not great, but not bad. Let's keep going. Let's do this other side. Again, just a little bit of paint. We don't want a lot. Not want paint. Get most of that out of here. Good. And we'll come over here and just start doing this side. There's quite... Okay, I've, I've only made a couple of strokes here, and I don't know if you can see it, but I can. There's still a lot of paint on this brush. I'm going to try to rub some more out, and then I'm just going to be very careful. 
because I don't want to overdo it. Okay. Dry flake. Got rid of it. About out to here is about as far as we want to go. Nice. Out a little bit. Just a little. Then we really want to do the inside. Again, this is our main source of light. This big, large center reflecting out along this edge. So we can go ahead and be pretty liberal here on this inner curve. Too liberal there, but it's okay. It's okay. And here and just again start up. All around the front here. I will say painting in this tiny little room is uh, not that bad until you've had the door closed for a while. It, it starts getting a little, a little musky, a little Elon musky. Pretty good to me. I don't know if you guys can see it on stream, but it's starting to look like we've got an, a nice little glow, nice little aura. Coming from these main points here. Maybe back brush a little. Maybe this isn't the best idea since the light is really coming from this direction. Like that a lot. Yeah, that's looking good. It's looking good. Alright, so that looks pretty good for these areas for this color. A little bit here. Come out a little bit more here. I think that looks okay. I think that looks okay for me. Again, I am no professional. I am no David Nunez. But, we're getting there. We're learning. So, now is the tricky part. We're going to go from the uh, Temple Guard blue to the a little bit lighter Baharth blue. The trick here is going to be to use way less paint than we did for the dry brushing. Try to wash our brush out here a little bit, dry it off really well, squeeze that water out best as we can. Now we're going to go to the next step. Again, we're going to use way less paint, just a tiny little bit. Too much. Get almost all of the paint out of the brush. Well, there's almost none left. I'm pressing really hard. I'm barely getting anything out. You can see there was the last little area I did. There's almost no paint there. Let's just go ahead and very, very lightly go over everything. Perfect. Again, very little. Very, very little. Yeah. 
you know what? I'm not happy with the amount of paint that's going on. I'm going to grab a little bit more. Just a little bit. Trying to wrap this up relatively soon. Don't want to take up too much of your guys' time. Again, this is just a test. As you saw earlier, we had audio issues. So we got that, uh, that figured out. Here, not a lot. A little bit back here. Not a lot. Here. bit down here on the main disc really starting to look like it's emanating a lot of light so I think we're close to done now we're gonna take our dry brush wash it off again I'm actually going to use another dry brush for this. I'm not going to use the same one because, as you can see on my paper towel here, it still is retaining a little bit of this blue after we wash it. We can squeeze it, we can dry it, but it still retains a little bit of that blue. And that's going to happen with a dry brush. You're going to need, uh, you're going to, need to be real particular about cleaning it out to get all of that paint out, especially if you're using reds. Good luck getting it all out. You'll never get it all out. But we're not. We're using a blue. So, I will grab this guy. A little bit smaller. It's also a dry brush. And here we're going to go with our gray. Our Ulfwin gray. However you say it. I don't know. I don't even really work here. We'll get most of this out. We need almost all of this out. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight a little bit the actual source of the light. Just a little. Just enough to give it a little glare, a little highlight, a little extra shine. Flip it over to this side and do the same. Not bad at all. It does not look bad. And we'll do the same on these little side doodads. Maybe a little bit more white. Maybe not. I can't tell. We're going to try something. Try to grab just a little bit more. That's a lot more. That's way more than I wanted. Yeah, it looks good. A little bit on this guy. That looks good. We'll put a little bit more on this big dude because, again, it is, at least in this right region, our main lighting source. So we kind of want to make it pop. And that is object source lighting from a guy who doesn't know how to paint minis. And if I can do it and make it look this easy, so can you. Thanks for watching, guys. We hope to see you soon. Uh, Sky will be on tomorrow sometime in the morning or mid-afternoon and he'll show you how to really paint. So if you want to tune in tomorrow, just keep an eye on our Twitch channel and uh, he'll show you he'll show you how, how a pro does it. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good night.